Alright everybody, welcome back to another video. So the title of the video is Do Not Buy This Car. So the car I'm referring to is my 2013 CRV behind me here. If you watch my other videos, you know that I did the facelift modification. It looks like a 2015 or 16, but it's not. It's a 2013. So why don't I recommend that you buy this CRV? Well, if you know me or you watch my channel, you know that I like Hondas a lot. I've made some very specific recommendations over the years on uh, Honda vehicles that were good buys. So it seems like Honda's sweet spot was the late 90s to the mid 2000s. And unfortunately, after that, they've kind of fallen off again. So why don't I recommend this vehicle? Well, there's one main big complaint. And it's something you may have heard of if you're coming to see this video. It's the VTC actuator problem that these vehicles develop. Surprisingly, with all of the Hondas that I've owned and all of uh, my experience in automotive and mechanics, I actually never really ran across the problem with the VTC actuator before owning this vehicle. And I'd never even heard of it. I also own a 2005 CRV which is probably one of the best vehicles I've ever owned and has given us no problems. That was the seat sweet spot for Honda, the 2005 to 2006 CRV, which I made a video about, which you can find in the description, was probably the best Honda CRV that has ever been made for multiple reasons. It had reliability, it's cheap, it's safe, but I thought stepping up to a newer one with basically the same engine, same powertrain, but just with uh, you know refinements over the years would be a good decision. Well, unfortunately, Honda had a bout of bad engineering when they designed some of the upgraded parts on these newer engines. You may have this problem on your Accord or CRV and not even realize it. Here's what it sounds like. So when you start the engine, usually on a cold start, usually the, after the vehicle sat overnight, you may hear this sound. What that sound is, is on the intake side of the camshaft, there's a variable actuator that allows the cam to advance the timing. And basically what happens is there's a pin in there that locks when there's not enough oil pressure. And that pin is basically searching for home as the engine's spinning. And there's the oil pressure has not come up in the engine yet. And that's metal on metal grinding. And then it stops. Now there's a variety of opinions from Honda dealers, technicians, to just Joe Blows on whether or not this is actually causing any damage or not. But I'd say the general consensus is that over time, if you allow this to go on for a long period of time without replacing the VTC actuator, it will cause your timing chain to stretch. So that metal on metal, it's putting tension on the chain until it's able to get to where it needs to be. It's not running as smooth. In time, it causes your timing chain to stretch your tensioner's got to have adjustment, eventually you'll end up with check engine lights, you know, your cam timing system, the computer system will finally see that it's out of spec, and then you'll have to replace your whole timing chain, tensioners, and the VCTC actuator. On the other hand, some people say, just leave it alone, and it's not that big of a deal, and it only does it on cold starts. Well, eventually, it starts doing it more and more and more when it gets bad enough that it's pretty much every time you start the car as long as it's had any amount of time for the oil to leak down uh, out of the top of the engine. So when I got this car, of course, you know, the whole time I test drove it, uh, when I was buying it, there was no problems. You know, there was nothing wrong with it. Uh, just, it was the first night that I had it. It was sitting out, it was like 20 degrees and I came out to start it and then it did it. And I had no idea what the sound was at first. I thought the starter got stuck. So I couldn't get it to do it again. You know, a couple days went by, came out, cold started it to go to work, the same thing happened again. So then I started doing research and then I found out this is a very, very, very big problem. These cars have problems. They all do it, essentially, eventually. And there's stories of people, you know, still under warranty having this problem. 
Over the years, Honda has come out with a couple of service bulletins. So the first one was 09-010, which came up, it was basically a step-by-step -step guide on how to replace the VTC actuator. It said it only applied to 2008 to 2012 Accords and some 2012, 2013 CRVs. Eventually, this was expanded with uh, Bulletin 16-012 to all 2013, 14 CRVs and cross tours and basically it covered all of the engines. So I started to think, okay, what would be the CRV that I would recommend that's newer at this point? And so, so far, I guess my sweet spot, now, if you want a newer CRV, would still have to be the 17 through 19 LX model with a 2.4 engine. But, you know, those are still relatively new uh, in age and we're waiting to see, you know, problems with that engine. There's some reports of minor oil dilution issues with all of the Earth Dreams engines, including the 2.4, even though that's more of a Honda 1.5 turbo problem. So I thought I'd be proactive, and it's something I could do myself, but um, since I just bought the vehicle, the dealer I bought it from, which is not a Honda dealer, agreed to pay for half of the price of the repair uh, just to try to make me happy, even though I bought a used car as is. So. I appreciated that. I had my local Honda dealer replace the VTC actuator. That was about a little under 2,000 miles or about a month ago. So I've been putting, I put almost 2,000 miles on this car in a month. And since they replaced it, it's been cold, it's winter, I've not had any problems. Fast forward to last week. I was at work, it was about 45 degrees, so not that cold, and I went out to start my car and it did it again. So here we are, 2,000 miles, one month later, and it did it again. So I thought, man, there's no way. So I turned the car off, let it sit, did it again. It did it again immediately. And then it wouldn't do it again. So I thought maybe it was a fluke. I changed the oil again, even though it was nowhere ne needing changed. I used high quality synthetic. I put royal purple. 0W20 oil, a brand new Honda filter in. I let it sit. Same thing. Went to leave work. A couple days later, it did it again. So I took it back to the dealer where I had the work done, explained that the problem, the issue was back. So once you've heard the sound a couple of times, you know exactly what it is. Basically, they let it sit overnight, cold start it in the morning. It didn't do it. I knew it probably wouldn't do it because it's very intermittent. Even though when it does do it now, it sounds worse than before I paid them $900 to fix it. So the dealer basically point blank told me there's nothing they can do unless they can get it to do it. So I do understand where they're coming from when they say that, but just like all good Honda dealers, and I say good in, in quotes, they know it's a problem. They won't admit anything. You're just stuck with it. So again, the problem is with time, you're going to wear out your timing components. You're going to need this replaced multiple times. There's stories of people replacing it three or four times under warranty. You know, it's getting to be seven to $900 just for the VTC actuator. If you need to do the whole timing set at a dealer, we're talking almost $2,000 for everything. Obviously people buy Hondas because they don't want to have to do repairs like this. If I wanted to work on my car every day, I would buy more Fords. You know, that's my problem. When I started realizing I was spending my own money on vehicles, I started trying to buy a more reliable vehicle that I wouldn't have to worry about stupid little engineering problems like this. Again, Honda seems to have, uh, you know, their engineering team has floated away from being reliable. And unfortunately, it seems like the only one left in the game is kind of Toyota, who just still tries to keep things simple and reliable, and that is the key to simplicity, or to reliability, is simplicity. If we look under the hood, here's the engine in my 2013. You can see, here's the engine in my 2005. Pretty much identical on the outside, except for the covers. So Honda squeezed a few more horsepower and a couple more miles per gallon out of this engine. And whatever they did, they ruined the great reliability of this engine when they created this. So I guess my biggest complaint is that just like a lot of stuff with Honda, 
they they actually did revise the part and they came out with a new part but it did not fix the problem i have the new revised part on my car and honestly with 2000 miles or a month that they didn't solve the problem which kind of tells me that the problem is not fixable i would even be open to entertain some sort of diy hack at this point like why can't I convert this engine to work like this engine? I don't know. Maybe a mechanic out there who's smarter than me when it comes to Hondas knows what I could do to permanently fix this issue. And if you do, be sure to leave a comment below for all of us. But I just wanted to make this quick video because I wanted to put it out there that I do not recommend this Generation 4 CRV, unfortunately, mainly because of this problem. There are other problems that are very common with them. For instance, a lot of people complain that you lose heat on the driver's side of the inside compartment. And I've noticed with mine, same thing, it's only got 120,000 miles on it, but it, ha it does have the problem where it's cooler on the driver's side. There's still heat, but it's cooler. And supposedly the fix is just to do some kind of crazy flush with you know high pressure water mixed with CLR cleaner and through the heater core and it breaks up the stuff and restores the power but like I said it's a Honda issue they all seem to do it eventually it's something you're gonna have to pay someone a lot of money to do if you can't do yourself the VTC actuator the same thing it's something you're gonna have to pay someone to do if you can't do it yourself I mean I guess it's better than replacing a transmission you know a lot of people have oil consumption problems with the VTC actuator fault where they use, you know, multiple quarts of oil between changes and then the dealer tries to blame it on the person for running their car low on oil. Well, the car shouldn't be burning oil in the first place. So I guess my advice is to stay away from this CRV. It wouldn't be so bad if Honda actually acknowledged the problem, but just like everything, just like the oil dilution problems they have with the 1.5 liter turbo, they absolutely refuse to take any responsibility or ownership for their engineering and design failures and they try to pretend that it is not a problem and they tell their dealers to carry on with that same bs of pretending like it's not an actual problem this was a design flaw with these vehicles there should be a class action lawsuit against honda to either fix it correctly which obviously is not possible otherwise they probably would have done it or to reimburse people or buy back the vehicles all right so sorry to be so negative in this video but I, like i said i just had to put it out there i want to prevent you from making a mistake by buying one of these fourth generation crvs there are better vehicles out there if you had a similar experience be sure to leave a comment below i really want to know where people are at with this problem with their vehicles. If you've paid to have the repair done, especially with the revised part, is yours still working? Is mine just a defective part? Again, I can't get the dealer to do anything until it gets bad enough again, so I just have to deal with it. But let me know in the comments below. Be sure to like the video, subscribe for more, and until next time, we'll see you later.